Hello, my name is Dennis Van Eustorp. I'm with the Bee Informed Partnership, and we will talk today about brood comb management as it pertains to the Winter Loss and Management Survey of 2011 and 2012. One of the things that we've been advocating for a long time is that beekeepers regularly replace the comb in their colony because that comb can act as a sponge for a lot of different chemicals. It can ask, act as a repository for um, the spores of different diseases. So we've been advocating removing those combs on a regular cycle. We asked beekeepers how many frames from each brood nest did they replace over the last year, and we got a significant response. One of the surprising responses was that people who reported replacing more than 50% of their comb lost significantly more colonies than those who reported not replacing any of their comb or 10% or fewer of their comb, suggesting that there may be an upper limit to how many combs you replace in a year. We also asked people, did you use any old brood comb when you started yeah, did you use, did you use any brood, old brood comb this last year? And the people who reported, yes, that they had used old brood comb, lost significantly fewer colonies than those who reported not using any new or old brood comb in their colonies. Again, a little bit surprising result. Another question we can ask is when you come across a dead colony, a beekeeper can do one of two things. One, they can pick up that equipment that, from the dead hive and bring it and store it to, for use in another time. Or they can put that equipment on a living colony right away to split it off later on. The people who reported using that equipment right away lost significantly fewer colonies than those who stored equipment. Again, uh, a surprising result, but this is the second year in a row we've seen that result. And so we'd want three years in a row to, to be sure of it, but it seems there may be some trend there. We asked beekeepers where they got new colonies, if they started new colonies. So you can buy hives. Certainly people who bought hives tended to lose fewer colonies than those who obtained colonies another way. Uh, installed a swarm. No difference between those who used installed swarms and those who didn't. Packages was a big one. People who reported using packages to replace their dead outs lost significantly more colonies than those who used a different way of replacing colonies. And the exact opposite was true for splitting. People who split their colonies lost fewer colonies than those who, who used a different way of replacing colonies or obtaining new colonies. Uh, splitting makes sense. We know that by splitting colonies uh, it seems to reduce varroa mite load and so that would make sense. And so again I think that the summary here is that if you are able to, if you need to replace your colonies, try splitting your colonies to get those replacements in place or buying new colonies. Um, and if you can, use some of your old brood comb, supplement it with some new comb, but don't just start with brand new comb. The information is for educational purposes only. References to commercial products or trade names do not imply endorsement by the Bee Informed Partnership or its members. The results presented here are the summary of the population who responded. The sample may not be representative of the beekeeping population at large. These results simply highlight differences in the sample population. The results cannot be considered conclusive, causative, protective, or a test to product efficacy or lack of efficacy.